This is KGW News at 4. Now at 4, the much needed meltdown. The ice and snow starts to go away. There's even some blue sky today, but problems from the weekend winter storms still with us. That's right, several businesses are damaged. This roof collapse happened at an old Navy store in Gresham, and that is just the beginning. Falling trees and ice brought down power lines across the area. Crews have been working nonstop to get power back for tens of thousands of people from Marion County to here in Portland. Kyle Boshi is here with an update and Kyle, we're starting to get an idea of how the damage compares with storms in the past. Yeah, PGE admits this is shaping up to be one of the worst storms in state history. It's especially challenging because there are so many outages spread across the region. Additionally, in many cases, they've made repairs to lines, only have them go down again. Snow, ice and wind brought down nearly 5,000 power lines in the Portland metro area. Many of them untouched, still tangled, leaving neighbors with no heat and no power. Just a lot of blankets, a very warm big dog laying next to me and a lot of cereal. Nearly 140,000 PGE customers are without electricity in the Portland area and in Marion County, Almost 60,000 people are in the dark, some since Friday. We have no idea how long it's going to take. It's, we don't know if it's two days, six days, seven days. PGE brought in crews from as far away as Nevada and Montana to help make repairs. Public safety is priority number one. Then they evaluate sheer numbers. But then we want to bring on the most people we can as quickly as we can. So if there's a job where doing the, the repairs is going to bring 4,000 people back online, that's going to take priority over a job that will only bring two or three people back online. Unlike normal circumstances, utilities can't predict when specific locations will get their power back. There are just too many outages, explained Steve Corson, spokesperson for PGE. We can't give you a realistic expectation for when power is going to be on at your specific location because we have to get to literally thousands of locations. In Northeast Portland, neighbors are coping with no heat, dark nights, and cold showers. It started out as an adventure, and it's probably at the point of not quite yet enough. I mean, I'm fairly patient, so I think I could go a couple more days, possibly. I don't want to, but if you have to, you have to, right? The most prized possession appears to be cell phone battery power, but even that is getting low after days without electricity. We have no idea. Could be a couple more days, could be today. But I do have my light, my light switch on in my main room so that when it goes on, bam, even at 2 in the morning, I'll know. Can't come soon enough. Back here live in southwest Portland at a PGE substation. Those neighbors are getting creative and helping one another. They're using their cars to help charge up those cell phone batteries. On a personal note, like thousands of others, we're without power at home as well, and it is getting a little tiring. Brutal cold shower this morning. Additionally, the freezer is now starting to thaw, which means that ice cream that I had squirreled away is not looking so good. <laughs> Kyle, I can absolutely relate to you on that level. I will say good news, though. They are slowly but surely getting to folks. Our power was just restored about an hour ago, so there's hope yet. Thanks so much, Kyle. There is another danger as people try to deal with the huge power outages, carbon monoxide poisoning. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office says four people died over the weekend, and today another four people ended up in the hospital. A generator was too close to a house without the right ventilation. Joe Rainieri has more on what to do to stay safe. The Gladstone Fire Department rushed to this house early Tuesday morning after several people inside were suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. When firefighters arrived, two people were found unconscious. It's terrible what happened. I'm hoping that uh, neighbors kind of check on everybody. And Neighbors in this area who've been without power since the weekend understand the need for someone to try to stay warm. Yeah, it's, it's a sad thing. I mean, a lot of people want to just get heated up and then uh, they don't realize that they got to you know, make sure their house is vented properly and um, maybe keep a door open. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office tells us there were six people inside the home while they used a generator. And the, the fire department wear carbon monoxide uh, warning systems on their rigs, and as soon as they stepped in the house, uh, their rigs went off. The generator was being used to keep the food from spoiling. They were actually using it to uh, keep their refrigerator cool. They had multiple refrigerators plugged into it, uh, and this generator, it, it was, in a, it was at a, in a shed. It's important to remember how to safely use a generator. Be sure to keep it at least 20 feet from any open doors, windows, or vents. It's also important to remember to have proper ventilation, which they were not doing in this case. 
Graves says anytime you're dealing with a heating source that uses gas, be sure to use extra caution. Anything that runs on gas, uh, like propane, gasoline, kerosene, anything that admits a fume once it's once it's when it's being used needs to remain at least 20 feet away from your house in a well vent- ventilated area. Oh, it's real sad. Yeah, it's just especially right now when there. people are still trying to bury out from the cold and the darkness that thousands have been facing for days now. Joe Ranieri, KGW News. Of the six people who were treated at that home this morning, four were taken to the hospital. Still no word on their condition this afternoon. There are serious concerns about power outages at senior facilities in Marion County. Many have been without lights and heat since Friday or Saturday. Here's Christine Pitawanich. For people who don't have power days after the ice storm in Marion County, it's been frustrating because they haven't been given a time frame as to when that power will be restored. I spoke with Melissa Alberta over the phone. She lives with and takes care of her 95-year-old grandmother, Betty Guild, in a Woodburn senior living community. We've lost everything in the fridge. We've lost everything in the freezer. It's less than 50 degrees in the house. All she and her grandmother can do is bundle up, trying to stay warm as they wait. Some senior facilities have also been dealing with tough situations. I'm Sue Miller, Executive Director at Meadow Creek Village Assisted Living in Salem, Oregon. Her facility, which has about 30 seniors, lost power Friday night. Their generator kicked in, then failed. Feels like forever, but um, we are still without electricity. But then Miller reached out to the United Way of the Mid Willamette Valley. We've had United Way with batteries, with um, heaters. We've got uh, cases of water for them, as well as some blankets. The United Way of the Mid Willamette Valley put up a Facebook post, and then a nurse at the senior facility was able to get in touch with Emory and Sons, a construction company that focuses on underground utilities. Uh, luckily, we had uh, large generators here in our yard, um, so that was that was lucky because we don't always have them sitting around. We just decided to throw it on the truck and drive over there and and get it there. The generators are being used to help heat a central space for the seniors, but because of the age of the building, most of Meadow Creek is still without power. But Miller says she's grateful for her staff and others in the community who have stepped up to help as well. Um, Tort House Athletic Club out south on South Commercial has offered us warm showers, so we're actually going to be loading up our bus. Um, taking some of our residents up for a hot shower. And Mill Creek Cafe, she says, has allowed them to use their kitchen to cook and do dishes. They really have um, provided us a godsend, literally. Still, she, Alberta, and many others have questions about when the power will be restored. I think PGE has probably blocked my number. <laughs> we just need information to know how long this is going to go on. A PGE spokesperson tells me there's no reliable time estimate they can give because of all the damage they're dealing with. As for prioritization, they say first they've got to take care of places like water treatment plants, hospitals, and fire stations. Nursing homes and assisted care facilities are of concern too, and he says if they contact PGE, PGE will work with them to come up with a plan. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Search boats were back out on the Columbia River today looking for a car that went off the Glen Jackson Bridge in heavy snow on Sunday. The driver of that car may be this man, Antonio Amaro Lopez. His family says they haven't seen him since the day of the crash. Amaro drives the bridge on his way home from work in Clark County at the family's restaurant. Witness descriptions of the vehicle match what Amaro drives. And this is very tough for the tight-knit family. We're trying not to lose hope. We're trying to keep our faith that that we were going to be able to find my dad. We just want to find him. Our hearts go out to the Amaro family. Today, the Multnomah County Sheriff's River Patrol was on the water using sonar, but so far they have not found the vehicle. Amaro's family asks you to keep an eye out and report anything you see that could be connected to this case. And on the vaccine front today, thousands lined up for weather delayed COVID shots in the Vancouver area. A Portland pharmacy started booking appointments and the White House promises more doses. Pat Doris has the latest. At the Clark County Fairgrounds, cars and trucks idled for two or three hours as drivers waited for a COVID shot. But after waiting for months, a couple of hours was no big deal. I'd wait all day to get a shot, you know. 
We're too old to fool around. <laughs> Many are here because their appointments were canceled by the storm. I, I am so grateful. I'm so happy to the government and, and thank God that uh, providing us, you know, save us, save our life. The drive through effort comes at the same time Washington state is struggling with its vaccine supply. The state said it appears some areas did not plan well for second shots and used all their supply for just the first shots. That resulted in requests for 170,000 second doses when the state planned for just 92,000. That's a difference of 77,700 shots. Using its weekly supply to cover those second doses means Washington will have just 36,000 doses for first shots this week. Some, but not all the folks here, got their second shot today. Big relief. Absolutely, we yeah. We can start traveling yeah. now. Yeah, we can start traveling now. Back in the Portland area in Milwaukee, the Brooklyn Pharmacy became one of the first in the area to offer COVID shots to those who qualify. Their website showed lots of appointments. Owner Pat Hubble said he's getting about 250 doses a week. What's it like to finally have this in your shop and be able to give it to people? It's, uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's anxiety producing, and we're glad to be a part of it. Everybody that has come in has been very patient, very uh, amenable to any changes we have to make as we move forward. But so far, we had to make just a few changes, um, but we're vaccinating people in a fairly routine and um, efficient manner. Brooklyn Pharmacy is part of the national program the Biden administration is supporting. The White House today reported the federal government will increase doses sent to pharmacies across the country to a total of 13 and a half million doses a week. That's double what it was just a month ago. Finally, a check of the major health systems in the Portland area found power outages did not ruin any COVID vaccine at any of their facilities during the storm. Now, the weather hasn't only affected the distribution of vaccines. Health officials say it's had an impact on reported case numbers. Today, the OHA reported 441 new cases and one death in Oregon. Sunday and Monday, the number of daily new cases was below 200. I sat down with Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines for her expert insight. The most recent low numbers are, are almost certainly from lack of testing because I know several testing sites uh, were probably closed for severe weather and just, and just everything was disrupted in terms of people being able to get places. So I take the last uh, few days of numbers with, with a large grain of salt, but no question that the overall trend is coming down. Uh, we're seeing percent positives, we're seeing number of cases, numbers of hospitalizations coming down, and that's real. And of course, zero deaths reported, I think, two at least two days in a row. Is that impacted by the weather, the death reporting, or is that just more good news from these trends? It could be impacted by weather. I feel like everything has been impacted by weather. Um, and death reporting, um, it's, the, it's sort of the last thing to be pinned down. And so if you look at some of the details that Oregon Health Authority releases on those deaths, you can find infection dates um, going back uh, potentially several weeks. Um, so that it's also hard to read exactly into death trends until you see them all kind of lay, laid out consistently over time. So Brittany, obviously very good news. We're seeing numbers go down as vaccinations go up. Are they related? Well, this is what's so interesting to me, Morgan, as should and it should really make our viewers proud of the hard work that they're doing mm -hmm. to slow the spread. Dr. Vine says the vaccine is starting to make a tiny contribution to the drop in case numbers, but she credits people's incredible efforts to keep up with masking, physical distancing and limiting social interactions with that drop. So it's mm. what we're doing. It's what you're doing at home and it's making a difference. Yeah, and that's why Oregon has had some of the lowest infection rates in the country throughout the entire pandemic and it obviously just reinforces the need to keep up the good work.